Hey, Algebra 2 local students, this is probability day two. We're going to be doing a few days of something called disjoint probability, and today's focus is going to be on using the word and to connect some ideas. I will tell you the entire first page of today's lesson is review from day one. So if you want to hit pause, go ahead and try the questions on page one. I'm going to reveal the answers to page one in just a moment here, but if you want to just do a quick check-in, see what you remember from probability day one. Now is a really good time to hit pause. If you're a little confused, you can just sort of watch through with some of these answers here. Probably that you pick at the letter S from Mississippi is four out of 11. There's four letter S's out of a total of 11 letters. This is a classic marble question, the probability that you're gonna get a marble that is not orange. Sorry for the Long Island accent there, would be five out of nine. At uh, another Long Island accent, Mario's Restaurant, pizza can come with three crusts, six toppings, and five meat toppings. So if you can choose one of each, you would just multiply the possibilities together to get 90. You don't have to do a tree diagram every time you do one of those questions. In fact, this would be a pretty large tree diagram with 90 possibilities. Probability that you pick a black face card would be six out of 52. There's two black jacks, two black queens, two black kings. Use that reference sheet if you need to. And if the probability of getting math homework on any night is 92%, what's the probability that you will not get math homework? 100 minus that would be 8%. And then the probability that you get a prime number when you roll a die is gonna be three out of six. So there, the numbers that are prime on a die are two, three, and five. So three out of those six numbers are going to be prime in the end. Okay, so if you have any questions about those, let us know. Otherwise, we're gonna move on to talk about probability with the word and, and there's a quick description at the top. When finding the probability a single event will occur and the word and is used, the probability is the intersection of the two events divided by the total number of outcomes. So if I want at the same time on a die to roll a three and an odd, or a prime and an odd, or a prime and an even. What we're gonna do is we're gonna list the possible outcomes for event one, the possible outcomes for the second event, and then see if those two groups have anything in common. If they do, that's the intersection, and then we'll write our final probability over here. Okay, so if we roll a single die once, the probability of getting a three, well, the first event is getting a three. So we're just gonna put a three here. The second event would be getting an odd number. So the odd numbers on a die are one, three, and five. The intersection or the overlap between these two groups happens to be the number three. So the intersection is, if we roll a three, that would meet both of these criteria, that it's a three and it's an odd. So the final probability is that we would have one number on the die, the number three, out of the six total numbers that would meet both of those criteria at the same time. Moving on to the probability of prime and odd, and it's gonna be a little bit different. So prime, we just saw on the warm-up that the prime numbers on the die are two, three, and five. The odd numbers on the die are one, three, and five. So a little bit more to discuss as far as overlap is concerned. The overlap in this case, let me see if I can grab a different color here. The overlap now are actually the numbers three and five. So I'm gonna write that down in the intersection here. The intersection is the numbers three and five. So we have two numbers out of six total on the die that would both be prime and odd. Okay, the three and the five, they're both prime numbers, they're both odd numbers. Okay, we're just looking for those that overlap or that intersection there. Moving on to prime and even. So prime we just listed up here a second ago. That was two, three, five. Even is two, four, six on the die. So if we're looking for the overlap between these two groups, I'm only seeing one item here. The number two is the only overlap. So just don't be fooled by what intersection means versus the probability, okay? There's only one number, it's the number two out of the six options 
that are going to result in having a prime and even. So the, the probability is one out of six. Okay, so this intersection column could have up to six numbers. The number of items in this column is what goes in the numerator here. All right, let's keep going. Probability that the number is bigger than three. So bigger than three would be four, five, six. And I also want it to be even. Even we just did up above was two, four, six. So the overlap between these two groups is they both have the number four. They both have the number six. So there are two numbers out of the six on the die that would be bigger than three and also even. And then the last scenario is probably that you get a two and then an odd. So probably getting a two, you're just gonna put a two. That's what the first event is. The probability that you get an odd, well, the odd numbers are one, three, five. And then we come over here and I hope you're thinking, hey, there is no intersection between those two groups, right? There's nothing in common. So if there's no overlap and there's nothing in common between those two groups, the final probability you're gonna list over here is that it's zero out of six, okay? It's impossible to roll a die and get a two and an odd number all at the same time. It's just not gonna happen, okay? All right, so if we're okay with these questions here, all we're going to do is we're now going to extend that to some other scenarios that we're familiar with. So we should be able to spin a spinner and calculate some probabilities. We should also be able to probably associate this with some cards that we'll just um, we'll get to in a few minutes. Okay. Next one, probably that you're going to get an odd and a number bigger than three on this spinner. Okay. So if you want to keep listing out those possibilities, the odd numbers are the one, three, five, seven. The numbers that are bigger than three are four, five, six, seven, and eight. So a little bit more to work with as compared to what we had with the dice a second ago, okay? But what's in common between these two groups? Well, they definitely both have five. They definitely both have seven. And that's all I'm seeing that the two groups have in common. So with those two numbers out of eight possibilities total on the spinner, the probability of getting an odd and a number bigger than three is going to be two out of eight for this first example. Okay. Next, we're going to go with prime and black. So the prime numbers on the wheel. So we got two, three, five, just like the dice, but also seven's a prime. Okay, so make sure you include that in the list. The black numbers are one, three, five, seven. There's a lot of overlap here. <coughs> So the three, five, seven, these two groups, those three numbers are both prime and black at the same time. So the probability that this will happen is that there would be three out of eight that would meet both of those. Okay, what if I wanted to do white and prime? So the white numbers are two, four, six, eight. And the prime numbers were two, three, five, seven. There's a lot less in common with these two groups. All I'm seeing is that number two there. So there's one number on the wheel on that spinner that is both white and prime at the same time. Okay, last one. We just have to remember what it means to be a multiple of four. Multiples of four would be four times a number, like four times one is four, four times two is eight. So things like four, eight, 12, those are all multiples of four. On this spinner here, the only multiples of four are four and eight. Then the second one's a number that's bigger than five. So the numbers that are bigger than five are six, seven, and eight. So you can see that these two things only have one thing in common, it's the number eight. So therefore, there's only one number on the spinner out of eight total that would meet both of those criteria. So if this helps to list out these two different groups each time and then see what the overlap is, that's great. I think there's gonna be you know other scenarios where you guys can probably just read the question and say, Oh yeah, I want a white and prime. There's only one of those on the wheel. It's the number two. You know, to show some work, I think it's kind of nice to show what's in each group and then kind of highlight or, or underline the overlap there, okay? All right, moving on to the last page. <clears throat> We're gonna do a little bit of card probability here. And then this is just a practice section. 
Okay. So it says calculate the probabilities if you draw one card from a deck. The probability that's a red card and that it's a queen. So the probability of getting a red card and a queen, if I want both of those things to happen at once, I can only think of two cards in the deck that would be both of those things. It would be the queen of hearts and then the queen of diamonds. Those are the only two cards that are both red and a queen at the same time. So remember that for cards, it's two out of 52. As a reminder, I haven't been reducing these fractions for probability, but if you want to reduce them or if you do reduce them, it's, it is certainly not incorrect. You would get full credit. I just kind of, for simplicity, have been leaving anything with cards for now out of 52 in the denominator. Okay, probably getting a black and a face card. So remember the face cards are the jacks, the queens, and the kings. So there are two jacks, two queens, and two kings that are black each. Right, the jack of spades and the jack of clubs and the same thing for the queens and the kings. So if I want a black and I want it to be a face card, we're gonna say it's a six out of 52 for this one. And then the last scenario, probably that it's a diamond and a number that's less than three. We have to be, I think, just a little bit cautious here because if you look at the deck of cards, that reference sheet, certainly the two of diamonds meets the criteria. The two is a number less than three and it's also a diamond. But if you wanna include the ace of diamonds as well, you know, sometimes the ace counts as a one if depending on what card game you're playing. I think based on where it's listed in our um, chart of our deck of cards, we can count that as being a number less than three as well. A little bit weird. Um, but in this scenario, there are two cards in the deck out of 52, if we include that ace of diamonds, that are less than three, but also a diamond at the same time. Okay. All right, if I were you, I would hit pause at this point and I would try the practice section. I'm gonna go through the answers to the practice section here, but if you wanna hit pause, Go ahead and try these. It should go kind of quickly anyway. There's some dice questions, some more cards. Here's a question about some months. We got to know the names and how to spell some months. And then some student questions down here. Um, let's go ahead and hit pause. I'm going to go through the answers right now. Okay. All right. So if we roll a die, the probability that the number is bigger than three and then less than six. So greater than three is the four, five, and six. Less than six is a lot of them. It's one, two, three, four, five. So what do these two groups have in common? Well, they both have four and five in common. So the probability that that will happen is a two out of six chance. Okay, we're looking for the overlap. And remember for a die, there's six total possibilities. Probably that you get an even number and a number less than three. So here are the evens, here are the numbers less than three. The only things this have in common is the number two. So that's a one in six chance of happening. Probably that you get a number greater than two. So that's these numbers. And an even, the evens are two, four, six. Okay, you'll see these both have four and they both have six in common. So there are two numbers out of six that would meet that criteria. And if this is too fast, hit pause. Certainly take your time with this. Last one is probably of odd and prime. The odd numbers are the one, three, five. The prime numbers are the two, three, five on a die. So you can see these both have three and five in common. A lot of two out of six is answers here. Okay, I wouldn't necessarily default to that always, but in these scenarios, <clears throat> we got two out of six a lot. All right, let's do another card question. A card is chosen at random. What's the probability of choosing a king and a spade? If it has to be both a king and a spade, there's only one card in the deck that I can think of that would that would meet that, and it happens to be the king of spades. There's only one. So that would be one out of 52. Sorry if that's not a good one up there, but okay. Chances of getting a king and a spade is one out of 52. There's only one in the deck. If the name of a month was chosen at random, what's the probability that it begins with J and ends with Y. So if you're thinking about months that begin with J, you know, we've got things like January, February, March, April, May, June. We've got July, August, September, October, November, December. These are the only ones that I can think of. 
that begin with a J, but it also has to end with a Y. It has to be the, has to do both. So we're gonna cross off June then. And you can see we only are left with January and July. So there are two months out of how many months total? Well, hopefully you guys remember that there's 12 months in the year. Although right now, who can keep track anyway? So the total probability would be two months out of 12, begin with a J and end with a Y. I'm gonna skip number four because depending on what class you're in, you know, this would change from class to class. If we choose a student at random, what's the probability that they are a girl and a senior? Well, depending on what class you're sitting in, that answer would change. And since we're not in class right now anyway, we'll skip it for now, okay? Um, try the probability homework too. Let us know if you have any questions. And then otherwise you'll see more and, and then we're gonna bring in the word or in the next lesson with probability. All right, take care guys.